All right, what's up everybody? We're back from the road trip. We got the van in the house. We're, that's for later on. But right now we're gonna get into Christina's Cadillac. This is a 1960 Coupe de Ville. She's had it for over a dozen years and, uh, and we're gonna give it some attention. We're gonna try and get her rolling this year. That's the whole plan. So we started on a body drop months ago and now I'm back at it. So there's gonna be all kinds of fabrication in this video. We're gonna do some hammer forming curved flanges in this video. We're gonna do some spot welding with MIG in this video as well as some rust repair and just some tips and tricks on how we get rid of uh, rust. You know, what chemicals do we use? That sort of thing, what tools we're using. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. I'm Carl Fisher and let's make it custom. Well, 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 the Cadillac. What can I say? I am so excited to be back on this car. If you are just joining us on the Cadillac and you have not seen any of the other videos, there's a couple videos. We did do a video on how I braced this car so that I could body drop it. This car is now body dropped. It's got a two and a half inch body drop, which means that the body is sunken over the chassis by two and a half inches, making our rocker lower than the actual frame. The frame used to stick down a bit, that's why we did it. We body dropped it, cut it all the way out, and made these new braces here out of 10 gauge that my body cross members actually tie into. And then I made new body cross members for the front, like these body mounts here on the X frame. It's X frame car, same as Impala, pretty much big body GM but a little bit longer basically. Not identical frame or anything, but same, same idea. So what I'm getting back into right now is um, welding up the body drop. So we got it tacked in place. Basically that's as far as we went. First off, we braced everything. Like I said, braced the trunk, braced the inside of the car. And then uh, we did do all the cuts to body drop it. Nothing is tied back together. I'm not sure what this transmission tunnel is gonna look like or the firewall or any of that yet because we are changing the um, drivetrain to just a small block Chevy. And the floors, they're done in the back. That's just an Impala floor pan. There's a video on that too if you guys want to check that out. I'm going to make, make full custom floors, but for now, this video I'm just going to keep welding up all the spots that need to be welded to structurally finish the body body drop modification itself. So you see where the wheel well attaches here. This is all cut. It's kind of rusty too. So I'm going to take care of that. Some more, um, I guess some filler pieces in here to tie the wheel housing to that inner panel there, both sides. So I've already got started. Here is what I'm working on now. So basically I'm just MIG welding it. You know, some guys, they're, they're all about TIG welding, and uh, I believe there's a time and a place for everything, but for this type of a car, you know, this type of a build, I'm not acid dipping it and fully concourse restoring it or anything like that. Like, this car is about having fun and building a cool car. So, the Caddy's first stage, it's not gonna be a full done car. Like, you know, that's not done yet that won't be like a finished painted car before I drive it. We like having fun with our cars and I love patina. So does Christina. She loves black patina. So what we're going to do first is get this car running and driving and working. 
that's the number one goal. The other things don't make it not run and drive. So, <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do first is get the chassis done, get the body done, get everything that's absolutely necessary to get this car rolling. And we're gonna start with finishing the body drop. So I'm gonna continue welding this all up. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do underneath here yet, but I'm gonna weld that up, that trunk area. I'm gonna weld this up here and I am going to uh, see how far I get. The whole technique with this type of MIG welding is I'm just tacking it in a bunch of spots all the way along, evenly spaced. And then I just start at this end and I'll stack another tack, stack another tack, stack another tack. And I just keep going all the way along. And the reason I do it in this pattern is that basically it's a good way to control how much heat I'm putting into it. If you just keep welding it all the way along, it's gonna pull weird, you know? So if you evenly spread out the heat, I'm just not worried about warping anything by doing it this way. I'm not cooling this material because this is a strong panel, like it's got uh, ribs in it and we're right on a flange here. So there's plenty of material to take that heat. So I'm not worried about, you know, cooling it with a rag or using air or any of that stuff. I'm just gonna stack attack, stack attack, stack attack, you know, and, and go all the way down until it's done. And you give it a nice grind and that's it. It's kind of a dirty area too. Like I did use a nice uh, twisted wire wheel. These are great. They don't uh, fly in and stick into you as much as the straight wire wheels do because they're twisted. They stay on a little better. But anyway, I did all that and it's still kind of dirty. Like on, on the in-betweens of the panels, there's, there's some stuff. So it is what it is, but the welds aren't, uh, you know, full of porosity or anything. They're, they're still good welds. Anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hammer onto that. We'll get onto the sides, we'll do some of that. We'll just get this stuff all strong so that we can pull the body off without having an issue. Okay, okay, okay. So next, so we got got this all done in here. It's just tack welds, you know, is what it is. The next spot I'm gonna do is right here. We've got some pinholes right in the bottom here. Since we cut, this piece sort of came in and down and we cut that part out of there. So it doesn't actually touch the flange like the rest of it. Like we got welds across this flange the whole way down but the flange is all the way back there. So I'm gonna cut this piece out and then uh, make, a, make a little patch for that. This is the, um, the trunk motor. Cadillacs are kind of cool um, and they've always kind of done this or, or for a long time they've done it. As soon as the latch comes down on the trunk and goes in here, did you hear that click? It's got a little switch, click. And then this motor has a worm gear. This is useless information for a lot of you, but it's got this worm gear, this gear right here, that sucks it down. This whole giant piece right here sucks down to tighten down the trunk so that you don't have to slam your trunk. Cadillac. Anyway, that piece is next.
Okay, so I got that piece all dialed in there. It's just, I don't know, I used a piece of 10 gauge instead of 16 or whatever, just, I don't know why. I just <laughs> thought it'd be okay place to put something strong. And this is welding to this trunk latch piece. Yeah, so that's that. This is all done, you already saw that. Next pieces I want to make are that piece right there on both sides. I think I'm just gonna trim this back. See that lip of this wheel well, like this lip? I'll trim it back to that and then just make a template of a piece to tie that in. This brace actually goes up inside this fin. So I just wanna get this brace attached to this wheel well. I was also looking at this area here. Like I just hacked that away because it had to be cut away to get that um, hinge down inside for the body drop. But if you look underneath, which I'm not gonna show you right now, just take my word for it. This area is totally open underneath. And when we pull the body off the chassis, that's when I'm gonna do that because it's gonna be much easier to get from underneath without all this junk in the way. I think that because the back is held here, I'm gonna do these braces up here and then I'll do some stuff on the inside and finish welding up the rockers and stuff. That'll be enough structure, you know, plus all this bracing that um, I am not at all worried about pulling the body off the chassis, um, which is what I wanna do next anyway. We're gonna get the chassis over here and start figuring out the air ride and that kind of stuff. And I'm gonna get a two post hoist put in right back here where the hot rod is so that we can lift that body on and off easier. Next up for me, I'm gonna make those little pieces in there. Let's do it.
All right, so we got those two braces in. Yeah, just these guys right there. They're not crazy. I didn't go too crazy with them, just something simple. Just did one little bend and, and uh, I plug welded those on with the MIG. When I plug weld stuff like that, you just wanna have a big enough hole that the MIG wire isn't gonna jump to the outside of the hole and not actually contact the inside of your plug weld. So I like at least a quarter inch hole to fill up. And, uh, and that way it gives you enough time in like depositing weld on there for it to be hot enough for it to really get a good weld on it. I'm just using a 110 MIG welder. Let me show you guys my little welder here. This is an old one actually. I went to KMS Tools to buy a welder and, and uh, they're like, well, we had this trade in and they gave me a good deal on it. So it's just a 130. Like most 110 MIG welders, if they're 130, 135, 140, those MIG welders will do most things for you, you know, doing this type of body work. Like I like using the MIG for areas like this because there's multiple layers inside there. There's multiple layers here. This isn't the cleanest because there was seam sealer all in there. Like couldn't get every last little bit out of that. So that would be a nightmare to TIG weld because there's a little bit of rust and it's not perfect. Like I wire wheeled it super well, but you know, for most part, my welds were, were decent, but TIG welding isn't always the answer. Um, it can be if you're going to acid dip a car and, and make it hundred percent restoration. But I like having fun with cars and not, <laughs> not taking that much time. Like, Sometimes you just want to get her done and, and, uh, and get her driving. So anyway, finished making up those two little pieces, nice and simple, just welded them right on the edge where the multiple layers were. The original brace back there used to be sandwiched in between that flange, which is the inner wheelhouse and the outer wheelhouse. So obviously I couldn't re-sandwich it in there. It would be kind of pointless. So I just butt welded it right on the top and made sure I got lots of heat. It's fine. It's perfect. So the next spot I'm going to go to is on the inside of the car and uh, things have gotten a little dirty since we last worked on it. This was all shiny steel before, but um, it could use a little bit of a scuff. Anyway, I replaced these back pans. These are actually, I ordered them as Impala pans, but this whole floor pan is the same as Impala in 1960, I guess 59, 60, but the Cadillac one is um, extended here by a few inches. That's the only real difference. But instead of buying a factory floor pan for this, because I did those 10 gauge inner rocker channels, these like Z beams, I'll call them. We, you know, we had them bent out of 10 gauge and uh, made some CNC 10 gauge body mounts here because that's different by going to a stock floor. Yeah, it might've been, you know, I'm sure I could have just kind of uh, bumped it around a bit and got got the floor to fit nice and, and extended it here But this is a good chance for me to build a custom floor from scratch, which I, I just enjoy doing We'll be able to do some like show you guys some different techniques and that kind of thing um, how I like to do them but the other sweet thing is that Because we channeled this car I you know like the seat the seat stays with the frame basically right so we channeled it so the seat is gonna poke up you know, a couple inches, um, which I don't really like seeing that if you can avoid it because usually the backs of the seats, you know, they're kind of low, so it doesn't interrupt the hard top line when you have all the windows down. So what I'd like to do is take the opportunity by making a custom floor to maybe sink the seat down in there a little bit. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just talking, talking away. But the next thing I'm gonna do is weld up right in here, stitch weld all that. And then uh, if you can see down by the wheelhouses here, this area needs to be welded. So what I'm gonna do is create a strip that connects the inside quarter panel to the inner wheelhouse. And I'm just gonna stitch weld that on and we'll seam seal it just for the strength. Right now, I'm just trying to focus on getting as much strength back into it so that we can pick it up with uh, with a two post hoist and get the get the new chassis under it so that we can build the rest of the floor. So um, also once we separate it from the chassis and it's all strong again, it'll be a lot easier to get inside the inner wheel quarters and um, like those are cut as well. That's where it's separated for the body drop. So I'm going to have to fill in on the inside, you know, in a in an area like that. There's a little bit of rust as well to take care of. So that's what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this area 
and then make some panels for the inside of the wheel, the, uh, the inner quarter and wheelhouse there. All right, so moving right along, I'm going to tackle next the um, inner quarter panel here to the wheel housing. I think I'm just going to make a patch that probably flanges onto the wheel house here and then um, just covers over and uh, I'll, I'll trim it up nice, but then I'll probably just lap it over top of this inner panel here, uh, the inner quarter panel, and, and then spot weld it on. I don't think I want to butt weld that whole thing. These structural pieces, those are welded on now. They're probably pretty important as far as how strong the body is connected to its structure, which is what I'm most worried about at the moment because I'd like to take this inner bracing out and then be able to lift the body off the chassis. I might even just, just to be safe, leave the inner bracing in and lift the body off until we get uh, everything fully done. But I'm trying to get as much of it together structurally so that we can do the body to chassis swap and then start building our floors and all that. All right, so next piece, inner quarter to wheelhouse. I'm gonna do that for both sides right now.
Okay, so I've been hammer forming these filler pieces that are gonna go from that quarter panel inner skin to the wheel housing. And I just wanted to kind of share a tip on the hammer forming. So I used to actually cut these back a little bit and uh, someone said, well, your edge doesn't stay super crispy if you cut it back. I was kind of cutting back for hammer clearance, but I don't think that's necessary. I took their suggestion and I've cut my top template the same size as my bottom template. And that seems to work out awesome and give a nice crisp edge. And when I'm hammer forming this over, I'm gonna just start and show you. There's kind of a trick as to where you're gonna hit. Like if I keep hitting on the very edge, like the tip of this flange and just start bending it over and trying to hammer it all down, it makes a little bit of a mess. So I tried to methodically go across here without doing too much at once. But after I initially get this started down, now I wanna hit closer to this line to start and make sure that that bend is crisp right there. Because what's happening with a curved flange like this is that it's trying to stretch itself out a little bit. It has to stretch a little bit that's why we're holding it so tightly is so that our hammer hits will force it to stretch. So we wanna make sure that the bend is happening right there and, uh, and all the stretching happens after that. So I like to try and hit with the edge of the hammer close to the line. That just ensures that this edge is crispy. That's kind of all that tip is for, just to make sure you have that nice crispy edge. It can get away from you if you don't do that. So um, there you go. Okay, so I'm about to um, kind of clean up it, the rust in here. I'm gonna use this product called Pour 15 Metal Prep. Um, I've used it before, I also use Rust Mort. They both kind of do the same thing. It basically just neutralizes the rust. It, uh, it just removes the rust. So what you have to do for like orange dusty rust situations is just wet the metal with that product. I've just got it in a squirt bottle. And so I'm just gonna wet all the metal that's rusty. I might as well just kind of get it all over the place. And especially in behind here, this is what, you know, while we have it open, while I'm adding this piece to the inner quarter panel here, I can see inside there. And those are spots that you can't get with sandblasting. You can only get that with acid dipping. So when it's out and exposed right now, I might as well shoot whatever I can in there, um, as well as I can take this cover panel off later and, and, and shoot some in there as well. Because you just got to do whatever you can when you can. You know, if, if, a, if a place is open, you might as well shoot it with the metal prep and, uh, and try and get rid of whatever rust you can. So it's like a pre-primer. Um, then afterwards, you uh, have to neutralize it with water. So I spray water on everything, let the water drain out, dry it all off, and then I'll be able to weld those pieces in. The pieces themselves, they turned out great. I just uh, was marking them for spot welds. I'm just gonna punch them with that same little hand punch and uh, I'll just MIG spot these on once this metal prep is finished.
All right, so I used that metal prep on everything and got the, uh, the surfaces prepped. I did spray a little bit of weld through primer on these pieces, as well as these guys that are gonna be our fillers here. So what I'm gonna do now is just kind of fit them all into place and start tacking them all the way up. I think that's gonna be a nice strong piece that's gonna really tie that in. And I'm just gonna spot weld it along everywhere. That'll take care of that. I think we're pretty much at the point where we've got enough structure. I'm not gonna be afraid to take the body off the chassis now that it's tied into these inner quarters and these extra braces behind me, those are all done. I'm gonna leave the main bracing of the car in, I think, because there's still a few more spots that we're gonna get better access to once the body's off the chassis, but I'm just gonna go ahead and start welding these guys up. All right, so, get this door open one-handed here. Ah, uh, we got it. Got those pieces in. Just gonna show you where we're at. So we got the uh, pieces welded in that are just kind of tying our floor to the wheelhouse, to the inner quarter there. There's a little bit of rust on this flange yet. I'm not sure how worried I'm gonna be about that. I just didn't want to, uh, you know, be putting 
all kinds of sparks and carnage inside there. Everything's metal prepped. This stuff works pretty good, um, or it works as it says it should. It, um, it's like a pre-primer. So now I'm not worried, like it, it kills the rust. That's literally what it does. The same as rust mort is it, you know, we sprayed it on everything and, uh, and soaked it, let it sit. And it's now, you know, eaten the rust essentially and, and turned it to this gray color. Yeah, so that should be good. We used a little bit of uh, copper weld through primer in behind that just to protect, you protect whatever you can when you're doing this type of work. That's kind of the main takeaway from all that. Um, I like using the copper stuff. I find that it doesn't spatter as much as the gray stuff for whatever reason, that's just my experience. I think that we are now ready structurally that I'm not worried about it. We can take the body off. Like I wanna move, move right along on this thing. So um, I think I'm still gonna create a piece because there used to be somewhat of a brace in here tied into the floor so i'll probably take some 10 gauge and just make like a little piece that ties to this new inner rocker this is 10 gauge by the way if you haven't seen all this this is heavy heavy duty so we've definitely upgraded the structure of this car by making this channel plate it's like a z plate it kind of goes and then goes underneath the rocker so that is super super strong i'm very happy with it i'm going to go to selfie Thank you everybody for watching Make It Custom. I'm so stoked to be back on the Cadillac and, uh, and working on cars. You know, I still got a few orders to fill for, uh, for some recently sold hammers, but there's not gonna be that gigantic push again, hopefully. So we'll be able to concentrate on, um, on doing some cars. One more business item is our website is back and it's fully stocked. For months, we had a hard time getting all the sizes of t-shirts and stuff like, I don't know if it's just COVID, but like the shortages, are just everywhere, you know? Microchips for trucks and t-shirts for, <laughs> for large guys, I guess, I don't know. But uh, anyway, our site is back stocked up. So if you, um, if you emailed about a shirt, cause, cause we were out of stock for a while, they're all back. So check out japanscustoms.com for uh, any of your swag apparel. We got toques, we got hats, we got sweaters, we got t-shirts, that kind of stuff. And we appreciate y'all, we really do. We're gonna keep burning on these cars and uh, hopefully you guys keep tuning in. So thanks again for watching Make It Custom, everybody. If you haven't already, please hit the like button, subscribe. Don't forget to hit notifications because we're coming back with two videos a week for the rest of the year. That's the plan anyway. So cheers, everybody. Have an awesome week. We'll see you in a few days.